every experience that you have with employees at Robert Alexander could mean the difference. I agree with you because I think there's a lot of addicts, and if you've ever known one, uh, that are looking for a way out. They're looking for any negative they can grasp and hold on to and say, okay, I'm, this isn't for me. You are very aware of that. So talk about the importance of every experience, whether it be one-on-one -on -one therapy, group therapy, like you said, even, even meeting the receptionist as you walk in the door, right? Right. <laughs> Unfortunately, people are, including myself, when I, was in, uh, when I was in my addiction and my alcoholism, are looking for any negative to get out of it. And the way that works, uh, particularly with our family therapist, right, we have to get the loved ones on board, whether it's mom, dad, brother, sister, we have to get everyone on the same page because um, I will look for anything to say, well, I, I don't like the way that person looked at me. I don't like the food here. I don't like the bed they have me in. Even to the point of lying and calling mom and dad and say, well, somebody offered me drugs while I was in that other center over there and lying and trying to trick the family into coming back in. So we use this holistic approach. We have a theater in the building. We have uh, a new fitness center and wellness center that we just added on. Uh, hydrotherapy, copper tubs, massage therapists. Mm -hmm. We do everything we can to take this holistic approach and try to get uh, occupy their minds as much as possible. But then that's where, the, again, the staff really comes in, all the way from the behavioral health techs that are working the floor every day, all the way up to the clinical director, very well trained in this space, and to notice this stuff when it's happening. And it all really is brought together by the family therapist, who is then communicating with mom, dad, family members, whatever that looks like, to tell them, hey, you're probably gonna get a call in 20 minutes from your loved one that says, hey, this is wrong, get me out of here now. But here's what's really happening. So the oh. family being involved with that is big. We, we see it all the time, John. Uh, somebody could come in, now think about this. They could come in and say, let's say you get your loved one to go to treatment and they're gonna make a 60 day commitment to go to treatment. They come in about two weeks later after the medical taper's done, they're on their feet, they're feeling better. They call a loved one and say, hey, I think I'm done. I don't need all of this. I don't need to do this process. I feel fine now and I just promise I'll never drink or use again. And they call a loved one and say, just come and get me. And sometimes the loved one does. They drive up and pick them up two weeks into a, let's say a 60 day stay, right? So I want you to think about this. The first act of your new sobriety was to break a commitment to yourself and to your family. Oh. Made a 60 day commitment, but now after two weeks, I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm gonna do it my way again. So the first act of your new life is to break a commitment. And you can't tell me that you're making a commitment to stay clean and sober for the rest of your life. What, 50, 60 years? But you can't hold a 60 day commitment to yourself and your family. Wow.